Hello everyone, welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. We have been discussing the first chapter and these are the topics that we have covered. We covered the basics of complex numbers and we have been discussing some elementary functions of complex numbers. I suggest that you pause the video here and see that you are conversant with these topics. You can revisit the topics if you feel it is required. The internet links to the videos covering these topics are given. This is the plan for today's lecture. We want to cover three functions of complex number in this lecture. The first one is log or natural log to be precise. Then we will consider complex powers. Suppose I want to find out z1 raised to z2 where z1 and z2 both are complex numbers. How to find these complex powers of complex numbers. And in the end we will discuss the inverse trigonometric functions. We already have discussed the trigonometric and hyperbolic functions in pre previous videos. In this video we will consider this inverse trigonometric functions and we will consider example for each of these topics. Let's first see how we define logarithm. Suppose I have b raised to x is equal to y where I am considering that b, x and y all of them are real numbers. Then log is defined in this way log of y to the base b is equal to then x. So this is how logarithm is defined. Now from this definition of log it is clear that this base of log can be any number but there are three bases which are frequently used. The first one is the decimal base, base 10 and when we consider this base that's why we get log of 100 to the base 10 is equal to Two, you can compare this well known fact with the definition of log. Another important base which is frequently used is E, where E is equal to this real number 2.72. Base to the log 10 is important because we have been using the decimal number system since a long period. Base E comes into picture when we consider calculus. This e, this number has a special place in calculus. I encourage you to find out why it is so important. In addition to these, one more base which is frequently used in modern world is base of 2. This 2 is important because of information technology since all these data these days are counted in bits and bytes. This is important from information theory point of view. For complex numbers, we will be sticking to log to the base e and when we consider these logs, they are called as natural logs. And therefore, many times instead of writing them as log to the base e, it is written as natural log ln of given number. So we will be using this notation. Let's define this function f of z, which is equal to log of z or natural log of z. Now we have seen that to find out different functions of complex numbers, complex numbers are to be written in the suitable form. In this case when we are finding out log of complex number, complex number is always written in exponential form. So complex number is to be written in, in this fashion. We also have seen that there are infinitely many arguments possible for the same point in argon plane where n here are the integers 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2 and so on. Note here that when n is equal to 0 that argument is called as the principal value of the argument. So for n is equal to 0 that theta is called as the principal argument. For our conventions, this principal argument lies in this range, in this half open interval. When we are finding out log of a complex number and if the number is given in rectangular form, we first have to convert that number to exponential form. We first write that number in exponential form and then, then only we can find out the log. Now finding out log, it's simple. 
when we write the complex number in exponential form which is this form i into theta plus 2 pi n remember n assumes value of any integers and now it is simple with basic formula you can see that i can rearrange this equation as i into theta plus 2 pi n and this is how you can find out log of a complex number this is how you can find out log z note a couple of things here first this log r is the real part of that complex number which is log of the given complex number and its imaginary part is given by this theta plus 2 pi n now you can see that since there are infinitely many values are possible for n this y also has infinitely many values there could be infinitely many values for log of a given complex number moreover if i try to plot all these values of log in argon plane what i get is this so this is the argon plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis suppose for a given complex number this x is somewhere here and then all these values of log all these infinitely many values of log they will lie on this line which is parallel to the imaginary axis and all of them these adjacent points so all these points now are the values of log of the given complex number all these values are such that adjacent two points they differ by distance of 2 pi so this is important when we find out log of a complex number first thing is that we should write that complex number in exponential form and log of z then turns out to be equal to log r plus i into theta plus 2 pi n here r is the modulus of that complex number theta is its argument and n assumes the integer values now this log r is the real part of log of that complex number and theta plus 2 pi n is the imaginary part and since n can have infinitely many values imaginary part of log of a complex number can also have infinitely many values they will be lying on different points in the complex plane and they will be lying in this way suppose this is the argon diagram this is the real axis and this is imaginary axis then all these infinitely many values of log they fall on this line which is parallel to the imaginary axis and they are in such a way that any two adjacent points have a distance of 2 pi between them and keep this fact in mind that log of a complex number is multivalued there are infinitely many possibilities for log of the same complex number however if we have to point out one unique value from all these infinitely many possibilities what value that can be obviously that would be the principal value so log of z is equal to log r plus i into theta where this theta is the principal argument when we consider this particular value of log of the complex number it is called as principal value of that log let's consider one example to find out log of a complex number let's find out log of minus 4 do you see something weird here if you try to find out log of minus 4 on calculator it gives you an error because as far as we stick to real numbers log of negative number does not exist but that is not true when it comes to complex numbers log of any complex number does exist and we will find out log of minus 4 here for demonstration purpose though i have considered minus 4 this could be any complex number and same method can be followed to find out log of any complex number to find out log of a complex number first thing i have to do is write the complex number in exponential form and before we write it in exponential form let's first plot it in argon plane this is real axis this is imaginary axis minus 4 is here where this distance is equal to 4 
to write minus 4 in exponential form now i don't need a calculator it is going to be 4 into e to the power i minus pi plus 2 pi n and therefore log of minus 4 is equal to log of 4 plus i into minus pi plus 2 pi n where n assumes integer value therefore log of minus 4 is equal to 1.39 plus i into minus pi sorry plus 2 pi n where n is any integer let's plot this number in the argon plane let me erase this all these points now are going to lie along this line where this length is equal to 1.39 the principal value of the log is obtained when we consider n to be equal to 0 so principal value of log of minus 4 is equal to 1.39 minus i pi or it is equal to 1.39 minus 3.14 i this is the principal value of the log of minus 4 now this point is going to be in the fourth quadrant somewhere here and all these points now will lie on the same line which is parallel to the imaginary axis and they will be such that these points are away from each other at a distance 2 pi so this is the principal value note that and rest of the infinitely many possibilities now are going to lie along this dashed line which is parallel to imaginary axis and all these consecutive points will be at a distance 2 pi away from each other along that line so this is how you can find out log of any complex number the same method can be used to find out log of any complex number let's now consider the next function suppose i want to find out z1 raised to z2 where z1 is a complex number in general and z2 is another complex number so here z1 is raised to a complex power to calculate this we can now take help of log that we have just defined what i'll do is i'll write that z1 raised to z2 is equal to z let's take log of this equation log z is z2 into log of z1 we just saw that we can find out log of z1 by writing that z1 in exponential form and then we can multiply that with z2 and we will have the right hand side of this equation but on left hand side what we have is log z what we want is z because that is equal to z1 raised to z2 we have to take the anti log and therefore z is equal to e to the power z2 into log of z1 now note here that log z1 is a complex number which in general can be written in terms of x1 plus i y1 similarly z2 is another complex number which can be written as x2 plus i y2 and therefore it is now possible to multiply this z2 into log of z1 which let me say is another complex number which is of this rectangular form x prime plus i y prime and we also have seen how to find out exponential functions of complex number and since this is a complex number now we can find out this z as e to the power x prime plus i y prime which is going to be equal to e to the power x prime into cos of y prime plus i sine of y prime you can see here that to find out complex power you have to calculate multiple functions first you have to take log then you have to multiply this log by another complex number then you have to take anti log or you have to find out exponential of that but now you have a method to find out complex powers and this method is useful in general to find out any complex powers where z1 and z2 are 
the complex numbers let's consider one example here for demonstration purpose i have considered a simple form 2 raised to i but remember that the same method can be used to find out any complex power let me say that z is 2 raised to i where do i start first i have to take log of the equation which is going to be equal to i into log of 2 so now i first have to calculate log of 2 here 2 is a real number in general if it was a complex number that was possible because we know how to find out log of a complex number let's treat 2 as a complex number with its imaginary component as 0 and let's see what are the possible logs so 2 is the point which is at a distance 2 along positive real axis from the origin and therefore 2 i can write as 2 into e to the power i 0 plus 2 pi n where n is any integer therefore log 2 is equal to log 2 plus i into 0 plus 2 pi n we just saw that log of a complex number is multivalued there are infinitely many possibilities for the log and we can see that here if we consider n to be equal to 0 then we will get the principal value however when n is non-zero we will get the rest of the values of the log i'll keep all these infinitely many possibilities so log z therefore is i into log 2 plus i into 0 plus 2 pi n now z is e to the power i into log 2 plus i into 0 plus 2 pi n so z therefore is equal to e to the power log 2 into i minus 0 plus 2 pi n now you can calculate this exponential this is going to be equal to e to the power 0 plus 2 pi n into cos of log of 2 plus i sine of log of 2 now i am leaving it for the viewers to calculate these cos of log of 2 and sine of log of 2 but important message here is that when we calculate this 2 to the power i that also is multivalued because if we consider this first term sorry there is a negative sign so if we consider that first term there are infinitely many possibilities so just like log is multivalued powers of complex numbers are also multivalued and that is true for many other functions of complex number and this is since the same point in argon plane can have multiple arguments let's see now how we can find out inverse trigonometric functions of complex numbers unfortunately it is not possible to give a specific formula to find out trigonometric functions each problem needs a special treatment special way to calculate that inverse trigonometric functions but what are inverse trigonometric functions suppose i want to find out inverse of some complex number z prime which is equal to z then i know that sin z is equal to z prime and we don't we know how to find out sin of a complex number sin z is defined as e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z divided by 2 i similarly cos z is e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z divided by 2 and in this way you can define rest of the trigonometric function so you can use this fact and then figure out what is what is inverse of given trigonometric function for that complex number with this now we come across one more interesting thing as far as we stick to real numbers we know that sine inverse of a number which is greater than zero so sine inverse of r or cos inverse of r where r is greater than one is not possible but in the world of complex numbers now that is not true you can find out something like sine inverse of 2 and cos inverse of 2 by using complex numbers here you can see the power of complex number already complex numbers extends the horizon of mathematics where this is not possible for real numbers now that is possible that is a reality in world of complex numbers let's consider one example let's try to find out 
tan inverse of 2i so we want z which should be equal to tan inverse of 2i where do i start i first have to use the fact that tan z is equal to 2i now the problem has boiled down to finding out z such that tan z is equal to 2i and by definition of tan z we know that it is equal to e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z divided by 2i divided by e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z divided by 2 you must have noticed that this is sin z and the denominator is cos z and this is equal to now 2i i will erase this so now this 2 2 is cancelled and what we have is e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z divided by e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z is equal to 2i square therefore what we get is e to the power i z minus e to the power minus i z is equal to minus 2 into e to the power i z plus e to the power minus i z now let me write this e to the power i z as x and therefore e to the power minus i z is inverse of that which is 1 by x and this equation now can be written as x minus 1 by x is equal to minus 2 into x plus 1 by x now with some mathematical jugglery it is possible to find out what is x let's do it it is x square minus x sorry minus 1 divided by x is equal to minus 2 into x square plus 1 divided by x so this x x will get cancelled and what we have is 3x square is equal to minus 1 let me carry this equation on the next slide so in the attempt of finding out tan inverse of 2i we have come up with this relation 3x square is equal to minus 1 where x is equal to e to the power i z and z is the number that we want to figure out so let me use this x here and what i get is 3 into e to the power 2 i z is equal to minus 1 to obtain z now we have to take log on both side log 3 plus 2i into z is equal to log of minus 1 so let's first find out log of minus 1 minus 1 is going to be here and therefore in exponential form it can be written as 1 into e to the power i minus pi plus 2 pi n therefore what i get is log 3 plus 2i z is equal to log of 1 plus i into minus pi plus 2 pi n so let's rearrange this equation what we get is 2 i z is equal to log of 1 minus log of 3 plus i into minus pi plus 2 pi n i'll continue my work here in this box z is equal to log 0 is equal to 0 so that term is gone and i have to take this 2i on right hand side so that will be minus of log 3 divided by 2 into 1 by i plus minus pi plus 2 pi n divided by 2i this is i and i get cancelled so i won't write it anyway so z is equal to for this first term what i'll do is i'll multiply that term by i 
and we'll divide it by i so in the denominator we will have i square which is equal to minus 1 and that term will then become plus log 3 by 2 into i so i will write it in terms of x plus i y it is now going to be equal to minus pi by 2 plus n pi plus i into log 3 divided by 2 therefore these are the possibilities for z for which tan z will be equal to 2i and therefore tan inverse of 2i is given by this by these numbers in the bracket for n here is any integer and as a common theme here we can see that inverse of the trigonometric function is also multi-valued if we consider n to be equal to 0 then we can say that this gives the principal value for tan inverse of 2i let's summarize what we have done in this lecture we considered log of the complex number and we saw that log of the complex number is multi-valued there are infinitely many possibilities for log of the same complex number but we can define the principal value and that happens when we consider principal value of the argument of the complex number we then saw that it is possible to have log of negative numbers also when it comes to the world of complex numbers we then consider complex powers of complex number to find out complex powers we have to use the log and exponential functions and by using them in a clever way we can find out complex powers of complex number just like log complex power is also multi-valued and then we saw inverse trigonometric functions of complex numbers which are also multi-valued and apart from that inverse of function now can be defined for an, a real number which is greater than 2 sine inverse and cos inverse can be defined for a number which is uh, greater than 2 so far we have discussed all the functions that we wanted to cover in this syllabus in next lecture we will see some applications of complex numbers thank you for watching this video